Hello everyone, Adrienne here. So today we're doing a bit of a different but still incredibly fun absinthe video. So today we're going to be focusing on three classic cocktails that I think everyone should try. And even my husband likes a couple of these, so if he likes it, Mr. I don't like absinthe, then obviously it's pretty damn good. <laughs> So I know I do a lot of absinthe reviews on my channel, but I don't really talk very much about absinthe cocktails. However, over the past year or so with the pandemic, I've developed an interest in the art of absinthe cocktails. So it's been a really, really fun outlet and on top of like trying absinthe in many different ways. And I've also been making TikToks on how to make some absinthe cocktails as well. So that's been really fun. But anyway, back in the pre-ban era of absinthe, it wasn't just in the traditional French drip method of preparation that absinthe was prepared. It was also made into cocktails. So pretty exciting stuff. I've been having such a fun time at making these amazing classic cocktails, not just for myself, but whenever my husband and I have friends over. And every now and then I'll make my husband a little cocktail too, so. Yeah. So not only are they delicious, but it is a really great way to introduce a newbie to absinthe if they're really intimidated by it, especially when you involve all of the accoutrement that is associated with absinthe. So disclaimer, really quick, I am by no means a professional bartender. I've never had any kind of bartending experience whatsoever. That being said, I just love making cocktails at home and sharing them with my husband and my friends and family. So if my clumsy amateur ass can do it, then you definitely can. Trust me on this. So for the purpose of this video, I am going to be using Jade Terminus Oxygene, which I am very, very excited about because this is my absolute favorite absinthe on the entire planet and just look how beautiful that label is it is absolutely gorgeous so the reason i'm using this one is because it is just so well balanced it's not too sweet either and it's just it just creates a really lovely full body for an absinthe cocktail without being too high originally i was thinking about using jade esprit edouard for these cocktails, but I kind of changed my mind because I really love Terminus Oxygene. I'm ashamed to admit that I'm almost out of this bottle, but I do have another one in my cabinet waiting for me once this is out. And I'm going to be putting this on my set because it kind of matches my color scheme on my set, especially with my new pillows. <laughs> Even Ted Bro, the owner of Jade Liqueurs, said that he enjoys using Esprit Edouard for his absinthe cocktails. It's just that I could not resist using Terminus Oxygene because I haven't had it in a while. And it just really makes a fresh, balanced cocktail, in my opinion. So if you were a bit lost on what absinthe to use for making these cocktails, that is totally up to your discretion. It can be any absinthe that you really enjoy, or if there is a bottle of absinthe hanging around your liquor cabinet that you want to declutter, or if there's a brand whose owner you don't want to associate with. <laughs> hanging around in your cabinet because of the ir irresponsible comments he's made about absinthe as a whole, then feel free to use that one as well, but it's totally up to you. But of course, the higher quality the absinthe, the better the cocktail will be. For brand recommendations of absinthe to use for these cocktails, and this is for people who aren't ready to invest in a higher quality brand and, you know, the bigger price tag that comes along with it. I would highly recommend getting a bottle of Lucid Absinthe Sepilia, who is um, the one of the sister companies of Jade Liqueurs. So it's made in the same distillery. And again, it, like it's so readily available and it's easy to drink and you really cannot go wrong with Lucid if you're just starting out with Absinthe. You can also try La Clandestine or Angelique because those are brands that are authentic and readily available in the United States, especially in the United States. Because, <laughs> you know, we have a problem with Absinthe apparently, still. 
So the first and arguably the oldest of these classic absinthe cocktails that I would like to make for you today is the Sazerac cocktail. This seems to have been around in one form or another since the 1850s and originated in New Orleans. And the originals were made with cognac, but it shifted to a base of rye whiskey when the vineyards um, in France being wiped out by a parasite made the production of cognac much more scarce. In the 20th century and in the post-ban era, yeah, post-ban era, I guess, if you want to talk about the ban being over, <laughs> rye whiskey, a combination of rye whiskey and cognac, or even a mixture of rye whiskey and brandy are used to make a Sazerac. It really just depends on the bar and how they want to serve their cocktails. I know I mentioned this is an absinthe cocktail, but this is only a rinse of absinthe used in this cocktail, so it's just a subtle whisper to dance with the aromatic bitters and the rye whiskey instead of getting hit in the face with it. So this might be a really good one for a beginner with absinthe, especially if they really like whiskey or brandy or cognac. You're gonna need a chilled old fashioned glass, a lemon peel for garnish, two ounces of whatever base you prefer, which for the purposes of this video, I will be using a gorgeous Sazerac rye whiskey that my husband's grandpa got for me, an absinthe rinse, half an ounce of simple syrup. And yes, I know that's a little bit controversial, but let me explain. Traditionally, you would muddle a sugar cube with the three dashes of Peychaud's bitters, but as my friend Joe of today's tipple, please go check him out, he's an incredible bartender, says in his perfect old fashioned video, simple syrup will keep your drink from getting grainy with sugar particles and will ultimately make your Sazerac much, much smoother. So let's get started with making it. All right, guys, we have all of our stuff ready to make our Sazerac cocktail. I'm pretty excited about this. So when it's time, I am going to scurry into the kitchen to get my giant ice cube so that I can chill this properly. And traditionally, this is served straight up with no ice, but personally, when I'm making it at home, I really like having a huge ice cube or ice sphere in it. So that's just me, but I'll be making this as it is intended. Okay, so first things first, we are going to add our simple syrup. And I'm really glad that I'm making this video now and before I completely ran out of this stuff, so yay. So we're gonna be starting with half an ounce of our simple syrup. And that is going right into my cocktail mixing glass. Very excited about this. Ooh, this is also my first time I'm using this uh, cocktail mixing glass too, so I'm very excited. So we're gonna be doing two dashes of Agnostora aromatic bitters. Probably a dash and a half, but that's okay. And then that was three dashes of Peychaud's bitters. And it has a really beautiful like red color and that's gonna add some really lovely dimension and I guess aesthetic to the Sazerac that we're going to be making today. Okay, now is the time to scurry in and get some ice. So I will be right back. Okay, I think that has a good stir there. You know what, screw it. I'm just gonna use this other uh, part of my uh, split ice cube over here and put that in my drink. Why not? May not be traditional, but meh, who cares? All right, so next I am taking my lemon garnish and I am rubbing it on the rim of the glass as you do. And I'm gonna save that for later. And now we're going to be adding two ounces of this lovely Sazerac rye whiskey. I'm so excited. I've had it before, but you know, I'm having a, a Sazerac and I adore the Sazerac. It's so good. It's definitely my favorite, like my second favorite of the cocktails that we're gonna be making today. All right, give that another really, 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 really good stir. All right, so now comes the time for the absinthe rinse. So again, normally when there's a rinse involved, I like to put a little dash in my cocktail shaker or my cocktail uh, mixer here, and then, you know, pour it into the glass at the end. But I'm, I'm abiding by tradition here. So there is a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of my Jade Terminus Oxygenae in here, 
kind of coating the glass and giving it a good rinse. Some bars actually have like a little atomizer that you spray the inside of the glass with, which I think is interesting, but you know, I'm doing it the tra traditional way. And then finally, our garnish. And if you guys are wondering where I got these uh, adorable cocktail picks from, I will link those down below. I think they're really, really cute. Okay, so I think I'm gonna give this one more good little stir here and we're going to strain it into our cocktail glass. And then finishing off with our garnish. All right, so now we have our Sazerac cocktail. Very exciting, very beautiful. Again, it's usually served straight up with no ice, but who cares? I like it like this. It's really lovely. Oh, you're really getting a big load of all of the aromatics in there. It's so nice. All right, so santé and please drink responsibly. I almost pretended like it was an absinthe review for a second. Uh, but I guess I'm kind of reviewing these cocktails. God, it is so good. It is definitely not for the faint of heart, but if you are a really big fan of whiskey and you're kind of wanting to warm up to the idea of absinthe a little bit more, then this is definitely a cocktail that I would recommend. I think the very subtle whisper of absinthe in here might get you more acquainted with the idea of actually trying it the tr traditional way. God, it's so, so good. It really is. And then as you uh, lift the glass, you can really get the aromatics from the lemon peel and everything. It's just so nice. So definitely recommend this cocktail for people who want to give absinthe a little shot. No pun intended. Please don't take the, that in shots. Please don't. For the love of God, please don't. <laughs> and you know, you're a big whiskey fan, I think this is definitely for you. It's so classic. And I think it's almost as old, if not older than the old fashioned. So something to keep in mind there. All right, so I'm going to enjoy the rest of this and I'm going to move on to the next cocktail, which is the absinthe frappe. So the next cocktail we'll be talking about today is the absinthe frappe. It was invented in 1874, also in New Orleans, by a bartender in the old absinthe house in the French Quarter. It apparently was a great, like, first thing in the morning pick-me-up cocktail, which I find kind of funny, like the whole idea of, like, morning cocktails, but um, I guess that's why we have the Bloody Mary. Hell, there was even a song about this cocktail made in 1904. You know, it kind of shows you how popular of a drink this is, that someone actually wrote a song about it. I think that's awesome. And shocker, the lyrics aren't talking about tripping balls. I wonder why that is. Hmm. Food for thought. And the first cold sip on your favorite lip, you determined to live through. Again, worthwhile, and with dawning smile, you imbibe your absence. The absinthe frappe features an ounce and a half of absinthe and a half ounce of simple syrup and crushed ice and fresh mint for garnish. It goes down very smoothly and this is one of my favorite spring and summer cocktails. My friend Joe says it is a great way to get reacquainted with absinthe if you had a bad experience with it or even a good way to get introduced to it if you're intimidated by it. So now I will show you how to make it. All right, so I have just finished my Sazerac cocktail and I took some pictures for Instagram to promote this video. So that was a lot of fun. And now I'm going to be making the absinthe frappe. So I'm particularly excited about making the absinthe frappe because I will be using my favorite absinthe, which is Jade um, Terminus Oxygene. It is, like I haven't had it with this one yet. I did a test drive of it with Jade Esprit Edouard. So one thing that's really nice about the absinthe frappe is that it's almost like the traditional preparation, but just, just not quite, just kind of a couple of subtle differences, if that makes sense. I'm going to be putting in lots of crushed ice. 
One thing I really like about this on top of it being pretty close to the traditional preparation is just how easy it is. You know, it's only two ingredients and lots of crushed ice and a garnish of mint. Like, ugh, can you get any easier than that, really? I can see why this was a hit. And then we are going to be doing half of an ounce of simple syrup. Oh God, no. Oh, there's only just a little bit left. Okay, that's fine. I can get some at the store next time I go. And then we are going to be adding our Jade Terminus Oxygene or whatever absinthe you're going to be using for your cocktails. Oh God, Jade Terminus Oxygene is so beautiful. Oh my God. Even just in this little jigger right here, you can see just the gorgeous, like deep olive colors that J. Terminus Oxygene has to offer. It's so beautiful. <sighs> There's a reason why it's my favorite. <laughs> and then putting the top on and giving it a really, really good shake. Oh God, that smells incredible. There we go. Ooh, it's really nice and frothy, really lovely. Into our tossade glass it goes. You can just see, look at that beautiful louche. Like it just louches right on its own because of all of that water and that dilution and the ice in there, really lovely. And I'm gonna be just adding a little bit more crushed ice to the mix, a little bit too much. And that's why I say that this is a really good drink for springtime or summertime, really lovely. Just look at that, beautiful presentation. And then you are going to be garnishing with a very generous sprig of mint and my bartender friend Joe recommends that serving this one with a straw. I definitely agree with that. And here it is, your absinthe frappe. Now, oh God, just look at how beautiful that is. It just looks so lovely and it has everything that you love about absinthe. It really does. But just, you know, you really get the mint up in your nose when you go in for a sip. Really lovely. It's a shame that my husband doesn't like this, but maybe if I topped it with a little bit of Saint Germain or like soda water or something, he might warm up to it a little bit, but we'll see. Okay, and we're gonna be going in for a sip, so santé, and uh, as always, tr please drink responsibly. <laughs> I'm definitely trying to drink as responsibly as I can, having three drinks in one afternoon, but um, we'll see how it goes. Man, just adding the extra like crushed ice, and everything and the simple syrup really tones down the absinthe just enough and like i said this is almost as good as like a traditional preparation so if you're not a big fan of like the traditional accoutrement and all of the equipment involved in making a traditional glass of absinthe but you still want to try it as close to traditional as possible this is probably a really good way for you to try it so like let's say you've gotten used to the presence of absinthe in like the Corpse Survivor and maybe even in the uh, Sazerac cocktail and you're ready to step it up a notch, then maybe the absinthe frappe is definitely for you because the flavors are still really nice and muted and definitely not overwhelming. And it will also depend on the absinthe that you use. Like when I use Jade Esprit Adorel, last night for uh, my little test run of this. It was just a little bit too strong and my husband wasn't that big of a fan of it. Well, let's see, maybe maybe Kenny likes it with Terminus Oxygene. Hey honey, yeah, would you mind giving the Absinthe Frappe with Jade Terminus Oxygene a try? Oh, I'm sorry. Getting an a non-Absinthe drinker's uh, perspective on this. So, she was just cuddled up, just got cuffed. I'm so sorry. So mean. So this is made with J Terminus Oxygene, which has a slightly lower alcohol content and it's a little sweeter. Is oh, thank it? Thank you. Oh. Oh. Still, still no go for you. Still no go for me. So absinthe frappes are just not for you. No. Okay. Uh. Good to know. Uh. If I top this with like soda water or like uh, maybe Saint Germain, would you like it a little more? Maybe. I mean, maybe soda water, but I mean, Saint Germain is uh, just uh, very um, finicky for me. Like when we put it in with the ginger ale, delicious. delicious. You put it in that other thing, gross. So, <laughs> you know, I'm very picky about its usage, I guess. 
So. Okay. Well, I really appreciate your input. So um, I just know for future reference that the absinthe frappe is a no-go for you. Thank you very much. Love you. Love you too. Okay, so Kenny, who does not like absinthe, is not a big fan of the absinthe frappe, but he's just not a big fan of absinthe in general unless it's a really sweet absinthe or really smooth and doesn't like make him cough when he when he takes a sip so uh yeah but i really love like having it like this it keeps it cool it keeps it refreshing the mint is really nice and another thing too about having mint as a garnish it kind of brings out the mintiness in some recipes of absinthe where there is peppermint used in the recipe so it kind of accentuates the mintiness that is present in some absinthe recipes. So I think that's really, really interesting. But yeah, I really like this. This is a really easy preparation for someone who does not want to fuss around with all of the accoutrements for the traditional preparation. So if you're ready to step it up and uh, get more acquainted with absinthe, get a little cozier with it, so to speak, then I think this is a really good option for you. Like I said, like cocktails are a really, really good way to get introduced to absinthe. You know, starting with cocktails that have like a little whisper of absinthe or like a little bit of an absinthe rinse, so to speak, is better than just diving in headfirst to the traditional preparation if you're not ready for it. This is a nice step up maybe from a corpse reviver in my opinion. All right, so I'm going to finish this cocktail and we are going to get ready for the corpse reviver, which is probably my favorite of the three. And Kenny's favorite of the three if we're being totally real here. And the third and final cocktail I will be discussing today is the Corpse Reviver number two. The family of Corpse Reviver cocktails has been around roughly since the 1870s and is kind of surrounded by the same idea as the absinthe frappe where you would have the hair of the dog that bit you, where if you came in and you were hungover that this would be a guaranteed like hangover cure to help you kind of ease into the day. And <laughs> I personally find that idea just absolutely hilarious but still my statement still stands I think that these cocktails are pretty awesome especially the corpse reviver number two it is definitely the most popular of the series of corpse revivers and I think it's the only one that has really stood the test of time since the prohibition era when it was invented so the corpse reviver number two was invented in the prohibition era in the like it was first mentioned in the Savoy cocktail book, which is like a seminal guide on all the cocktails of the Prohibition era. And it was an American bartender that went from the United States to the United Kingdom and opened his own bar or became a part of this bar in the UK and invented this cocktail. And it's so funny. I love the comment that he makes about the Corpse Reviver number two. He said something like, uh, four or five of these in quick succession will unrevive the corpse, which I think is absolutely hilarious because it's true. If you have too many of these, then you're probably going to hit the floor like a sack of potatoes. So this one is actually really, really easy to make. And I will say something else that's a little bit controversial here. I actually like putting a dash of absinthe in the cocktail shaker before I shake the cocktail. I don't actually like doing the, the rinse thing where you pour like a tiny dash of absinthe in the cocktail glass before kind of swirling it around and kind of coating the glass with absinthe. I just think that it offers a little bit more of a consistent flavor when you put it in the cocktail shaker but that's just me. So you are going to be using a coupe glass for this. Yes, it will, I would recommend chilling it because it just makes the drink that much better and that much fancier. So this is going to be equal parts. So three fourths of an ounce each of lemon juice, gin, uh, Cointreau. In this case, I'm going to be using Cointreau for this recipe, but if you don't have Cointreau, you can use uh, triple sec or any other orange liqueur that you enjoy. Uh, Lille Blanc, which is another thing that's kind of controversial for this recipe because people are just like, oh, Lille Blanc isn't the same thing as Kina Lille, because Kina Lille was the original ingredient for this cocktail that uh, Lille Blanc has taken the place of. However, it no longer exists. And some people are just like, oh, you need to get um, this. Other I think it's the 
Noki Americano, I think, if I remember correctly. And they're just like, oh, stay away from Lele Blanc. But I think Lele Blanc is perfectly acceptable to use for this one. And then, of course, a little tiny dash of absinthe or a rinse of absinthe. So this cocktail is absolutely delicious. It's one of my favorites. It's definitely nice to have after a crappy day at work. <laughs> Kenny, I would say, probably likes this one the most out of the three cocktails. All right, so now I'm going to reposition the camera and show you guys how to make it. All right, guys, so I am back. We're going to be making the third and final cocktail in this video. I'm definitely a little tipsy, um, definitely not like too inebriated, so that's good. I'm conscious enough to make the Corpse Reviver number two. So first things first, we are going to put a rinse, quote unquote, of absinthe in the cocktail glass in question. And like I said, I usually like to put it in the shaker, but I'm going to be abiding by tradition here because, you know, I want to show you guys like how the traditional way it's made. Definitely going to coat the inside of the glass here. Oh God. Ah, oh, that Jade Terminus Oxygene smells incredible. Like I really wish I had smell of vision right now, but I don't. And then here is the half of my very bald looking lemon because I used the uh, lemon, like this same lemon earlier to make the peel for my Sazerac cocktail. And I usually like to use a strainer when I am dealing with lemon in a cocktail because there are some really tiny seeds that can sometimes make it into the jigger and I don't want that to happen because that would suck. Three fourths of an ounce of lemon juice. And then this is a Le Le Blanc that I'll be using for this recipe. I gotta tell you, like I've really grown fond of Le Le Blanc just in general. Like I've made some cocktails with Le Blanc and gin and uh, Saint Germain. Oh God, they just go so well together. If you guys are interested in a part two for like more modern absinthe cocktails to try, then I'll definitely include the Necromancer, which is kind of like a modern revival of the Corpse Reviver number two. God, it's so good. Even Kenny likes it. But as he said earlier, um, Saint Germain can be a little finicky. So I totally understand that. Okay, so three fourths of an ounce of gin and I'm using the botanist. And this is definitely my favorite gin that I've tried. Like I'm not a gin person. It's so weird. Everyone who knows that I like absinthe is just like, oh, you like absinthe, you must like gin. And I'm just like, I don't see the connection there, but okay. But they're just like, oh yeah, you're gonna like gin. Gin by itself, most of the time grosses me out. I think it's nasty, but this by itself is tolerable. It's really nice. It goes down very smoothly. And then I'm adding a three quarters of an ounce of Cointreau. And this is my first time actually making it with Cointreau because before I just used like triple sec because it's a little bit more budget friendly but I just wanted to upgrade the orange liqueur part of this cocktail to see what happened. Okay, so we have all of our important parts assembled and we have the absinthe rinse chilling in our very, very cold glass. And now all that remains is to shake it and then pour it into our chilled coupe glass. The uh, outside of the container here, uh, the shaker is very, very frothy and very frosty too. That is just so lovely. And then once again, I'm showing off my uh, very fancy cocktail picks. And this is your finished Corpse Reviver. It is garnished with a maraschino cherry. They're just so refreshing. Honestly, I've loved maraschino cherries ever since I was a kid uh, when I had like Shirley Temples for the first time. So yeah, they're wonderful. All right, so as always, salte and please drink responsibly. God, that's so... So lovely. I will say it has a little bit more of like an orange peel flavor with the Cointreau in there versus the triple sec, but it's definitely like still so easy to drink. Like it's so refreshing. As a matter of fact, the weekend after Kenny and I got married, our officiant, who is Kenny's, like one of Kenny's best and closest friends, uh, Russell, presided over our wedding and it was super, super special. We had him over a couple of nights the weekend after we got married 
to hang out and stream on Twitch and stuff like that. And I made him a Corpse Reviver number two with our wedding absinthe, which was uh, Jade Nouvelle Orléans. So uh, we served that at our wedding. And thankfully we had a whole bunch left over, but still I was really surprised at how much it had been consumed for our wedding. So that was really impressive. Yeah, it was pretty popular. <laughs> I made a Corpse Reviver number two with our wedding absinthe and I served it to Kenny's friend Russell as kind of a thank you and a nice gesture to, you know, make our special day special for our wedding. And he said, oh wow, that is so easy to drink. Like he was genuinely surprised by how easy it went down and how easy it was to drink. And it's, that's definitely the case with the Corpse Reviver number two. It's so easy to drink. Yeah, you're definitely getting a little bit more of like the, the orange peel flavor with Cointreau versus Triple Sec. So I kind of like it though. Kind of tampers down the potential bitterness from the gin, if that makes sense. And since this is Kenny, like one of Kenny's favorite cocktails that I have made for him that feature absinthe, I'm gonna have him come in here and tell you guys what he likes about it, being a person that doesn't like absinthe. Hey, honey. Okay, so here is the Corpse Reviver. Now, keep in mind, I'm, I made this with Cointreau versus um, Triple Sec, so the flavor's gonna be a little different. Kind of like an orange peel kind of flavor. It definitely has an orange peel-y flavor. I think I prefer it with Triple Sec, but I'd still really? drink that. You would still drink this, I'd okay. I'd still drink that. What else would you say about the Corpse Reviver as yeah. someone that doesn't like absinthe? I think part of the reason I like it is I don't get much of the absinthe taste Yeah, because it's it. just a little rinse. Yeah, I mostly get, you know, all the other liquors that I like. You know, like Triple Sec and stuff like that. And so. the lemon juice in there. And I love lemon juice. So I think the reason I like it is that absinthe definitely takes a backseat, if not just hiding in the trunk of the car, so to speak. Okay. So. Would you say that the flavors of absinthe that you do taste kind of complement the overall profile? Like the herbal and floral kind of notes in there? Eh, I'd just say that I, I, I don't have much of the absinthe flavor that comes to mind, and I think that's about all I can say about that. Okay. To quote Forrest Gump. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> No, it's, that's all I got to say about that. That's what he says. Oh my god, you're so cute. I love you. I love you too. Thank you so much for your input. I appreciate it. No problem. Okay, so you heard it from my husband. Also, I should add, my husband really loves maraschino cherries. So, um, there's that. But yeah, the, the Corpse Reviver is so light and so refreshing and really citrusy. So if you have someone who's really into like really light citrusy flavors, I think they're really going to like the Corpse Reviver. And it just offers like a little whisper of absinthe and definitely doesn't punch you in the face with it. So it might be a really good like introductory cocktail for absinthe. So definitely keep that in mind. But I think anyone honestly no matter what their preferences like lean toward, I think they'll really like it. Yeah, I'm definitely getting more of like an orange peel kind of flavor with the Cointreau. And like I said, this is my first time trying it with the Cointreau because I more often make it with triple sec because it's just a little bit more budget friendly. But that being said, I really like that orange peel flavor. It's really interesting. Definitely as far as all three of the absinthe cocktails that we have had today. The Corpse Reviver is my favorite. The Sazerac would come in second as my favorite. And then the uh, absinthe frappe comes in third because one of the reasons why I gravitate toward absinthe cocktails is because it's like a different experience with absinthe. It's not quite like having it the traditional way. Like I have it so often and you know, so prominently on my channel. So when you have a cocktail that has absinthe in it, it's definitely a different experience. It's definitely different flavor profiles. You can experiment with this and that and different like bitter versus like sweet, that kind of thing. And I think that's really fun. And like I said, it's a really good way to introduce someone to absinthe without overwhelming them with the whole process of the traditional preparation. If you guys like any of the cocktails that I have featured in today's video, go ahead and comment down below why they're your favorite of the three, of course. And if you guys are interested in me 
doing like a part two featuring more modern absinthe cocktails, I would definitely love to hear that because this video was a lot of work. It definitely was. However, it's definitely a deviation from my typical content that is surrounding absinthe where I just do like reviews of absinthe, but making cocktails here and having a good time and sitting with you guys while I'm doing it is just so much fun. So I'm really glad that the viewers of mine who follow me on Twitter voted on absinthe cocktails because this was a lot of fun to do. Okay, so all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I had so much fun making this video today. I know it's going to be a bitch to edit, but that's okay. We'll deal with it when I sober up. <laughs> yeah, I've had three drinks within the course of a couple of hours, so... <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely not as bad as I thought I would be, but, you know, I'm a little inebriated. <laughs> but I'm having a good time with you guys, I really am. So feel free to comment below as to which one of these cocktails is your favorite if you've had it before, or which one of these kind of piques your interest. I'd be really, really interested to see how that shakes up. <laughs> Pardon the pun there, cocktail shaker, <laughs> so funny. And then I am planning on doing like a part two of this sometime down the road. So if you have any like more modern like 20th century or like 21st century absinthe cocktails that you're interested in, please let me know and I may feature them in a part two of this video. And thank you so much to my patrons for your support every single month. I literally could not do it without you. And to everyone else, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more videos on absinthe and gothic literature and goth music, especially new goth music if you're interested in that sort of thing. And to everyone, you're amazing. I love you and I will see you guys later. Bye.